spikes, they make me smile. Hi, my name is Mike Falk, and I'm the operator of Pro Bike Tech, located in San Francisco on Pacific and Polk. And tonight, as it's evening, we're going to demonstrate how to build a rear wheel, a rear road wheel for a bicycle. Um, the first thing that we need to determine is which hub or which hub you plan to use and which rim you plan to use. Um, we've selected a, a pretty standard rim, which is a Mavic Open Pro and 32 hole. And in the hub that we're using um, is a specialized S Works, which is made by Hugi. Uh, again, 32 hole. Um, the most commonly used method of determining the spoke length today is to go online and use uh, UBI's uh, United Bicycle Institute or other spoke calculators. So in order to determine the spoke length, the factors that we need to know are, first of all, what is what size wheel. In this case, we're building a 700C, it's a road wheel. And then the ERD, which is the effective rim diameter, um, which can either be Post it on the rim itself in the case of uh, velocity rims. They'll have a sticker that will tell you the ERD. Um, and many other uh, well-made rims also will have an ERD sticker on them. Um, however, Mavic does not. Um, so I did a prior uh, web search. The ERD for a Mavic Open Pro is uh, 605 millimeters. The next factor that we need to know is the hub flange diameter. And what the hub flange diameter is, is hole to hole across on the hub flange. So from one hole to the other across the hub flange. And in this case, um, it is uh, 53 millimeters. Now, being as this is a, a rear wheel that we're building, um, there's, there's a factor that's, that's known as dish. So because we have to make up for the space of the free hub body, uh, where the cassette, the sprockets go on the rear, um, the hub flange itself is not centered on the hub. Therefore, the spokes on the drive side will be shorter than the spokes on the non-drive side. And, and the spokes on the non-drive side will be at a, at a more relaxed angle, whereas the spokes on the drive side will be at a steeper angle, which is known as greater dish. Uh, so we have to actually run through this twice um, on a rear wheel. On a front wheel, because the hub is centered on the rim, the spokes are the same length on either side. On, on a rear, however, the spokes on the drive side will be shorter than the spokes on the non-drive side. So we've determined the hub flange diameter and then hub center to flange. In this case is from, from, from the dropout where, where the axle sits in the dropout to where the axle sits in the dropout, we determine the center by dividing that in half. And in the distance, from that to, to the flange. On the, on the non-drive side, that is 78 millimeters. Drive side, that is 52 millimeters. Okay, the next factor is hub spoke hole diameter, uh, which is the gauge of the spoke, uh, 2.5. And then it's a 32 hole wheel, so 32 spokes. And then the cross pattern, we're doing the basic three cross pattern, um, which is most commonly used. Once you enter those factors um, on the online calculator, you simply hit calculate. And in this case, um, we've come up with 302.3. Now we're talking about millimeters, so the 0.3 uh, can be dismissed. Um, so on the non-drive side, we need spokes that are 302 millimeters long. On the drive side, it, which I ran through this calculator prior, um, just changing the factor for the hub center to flange from 78 to 52. So on the drive side, it's, we need spokes that are 297 millimeters long. So 
for for a rear wheel again two different spoke lengths um 297 and 302. so the next step is to acquire or cut and thread or have the spokes cut and threaded for you 